Hello once again, my friends. It's me, the voices in your headphones. And I am back. So where did we leave off? Let's see. Oh, right, right. Smile tapes. I'm only about three, four months overdue for part two. So where did the story leave off the last time we were looking at this? Right, for some reason spores are a drug that makes people violently smile and somehow turn a guy into a digital ghost or something? Uh, maybe this next part will clarify. Starting with the first segment, we have a moment that is an unnamed narrator noting down a signal coming from a spot near the southernmost edge of California. The broadcast starts to play some of these signals. And wow, we just really started here, didn't we? Did we really just jump straight into absolute nonsense cryptic shit, like right from the gate? I mean, I've seen the rest of the series up to the end of Volume 3, which acts as the ending of Season 1. This doesn't come up again. If I'm wrong, I must have missed something major, but I'm 99% sure this doesn't come up after this part. So we're just going to save time for me trying to crack this particular code, and we're just going to ask the question of why. Why does this exist? Why is it in this format? Why does this not serve the narrative? Why is the series so popular? Why does a wow man think this is a good series? Why do any of you think this is a good series? Why am I such a pedantic little ass? Many questions, all unanswered. We're going to move on to the mid-section of this video to actually start picking things apart. It begins giving us a small update on the virus itself, how it spreads from victim to victim, how it tends to escape from the orifices of the dead, and how it tends to linger in the air for upwards 30 hours, which risks contamination for anybody nearby. On top of this, there's been people that have been known for going around to spread the disease, being dubbed as spore puffers, which... Just it's kind of a funny name. So right now we have Promise, narrative speaking. It's starting to build up more on the world, expand more on the virus, and introduces a concept that will be coming in later about there being a possible mutation to it. I wonder if this is going to continue to build a proper narrative and not disappoint me with something that doesn't fit the tone or the story in the slightest at some point soon. We next get a recap of how the last season ended in which Sean Gomez performed an attempted mass homicide, and we know how well that ended for him. And hey look, something just suddenly disappoint me that doesn't fit the tone of the story in the slightest. We get some more of that digital ghost shit going on and... How do I put this? So, I know we're only at the early middle portion of this video, and I'm going to talk to you about what makes a story work. Because as you will see going on, Smile Tapes does a small fucky-wucky in that its narrative is a mess, if not borderline non-existent. I know I made a bit of a deal about it in the last video and I'm full of hyperbole and tend to overstate reactions because I think it's funny, but strap in, we're going to sit here and have a big boy talk about writing and how to make a story work. I know this is kind of jammed in awkwardly in the middle here, but let's be real, there's no point that I can naturally slide this in, which is partially to blame on the most fundamental flaw that Smile Tips has which we are going to get to, just for now, going to put a pin in that. So, here's the thing in the best written stories. I'm not saying this needs to be one of the best written stories ever made, but I feel like every creative product should be at least trying to be. So, a story is kind of like a soup. You have to be careful of what you want to put in it, because you can just have the most perfect blend of characters, ideas, and narrative, and sometimes all it takes is one misplaced ingredient to bring the entire thing down. And in the soup analogy, this tape corruption, or digital ghost, or however you want to call it, is just like dropping a pineapple into some chicken noodle and stirring it into a pulpy, inedible mess. You know what I mean? It adds some kind of flavor, sure. It makes it more interesting. It adds something to the base, but it doesn't really fit at all. Now you've got some perfectly good soup just ruined by an ingredient you saw in another recipe and thought it would make yours better, but instead it just makes it into an unappetizing mess and makes the people wonder why you even put it there. With this being added into the series, it doesn't make someone go, hey, that's interesting, that makes this unique and enjoyable. It just makes people go, why? 
And sure, there's going to be some people that go along with it. They'll just take whatever you give them. Like poor British orphans in the 1800s, they don't care about quality. They just want anything to feed that hole inside them. They're malnourished and starve for something interesting to think about, and it will take whatever you give them and ingest it without second thought. Alright, so soup tangent aside, what I'm basically saying is there's no reason for this to be here. It goes entirely unexplained, even though it's a recurring element in the series. And if you're going to just have this be part of your story without any kind of closure or explanation, it shows you didn't really think the series out, and you're just writing by the seat of your pants. Which I'm not knocking you for, it's a legitimate way to get a story started or drafted, but it shouldn't be how the end result is done. It's important to go through and think, how will this affect the story? How will this tie in later? How can I close this loose end? That's how you make a story feel tight and fulfilling, and there is none of that here. I believe I mentioned this last video, but if there's something in the series that doesn't seem to be in for any reason but to add spook value, it does the opposite of what you're trying to accomplish. On the concept of horror, people fear what they don't know, don't understand, or simply can't perceive. That's the basics. Though just because something goes unexplained doesn't mean it's something you can't understand. And if you have something that can be explained and isn't, then people come to their own conclusions. For example, we get no explanation of why this zombie mushroom fungus is causing these tapes to get distorted and edited. This all plays out like an event that has already happened, so I assume what fooling the mass media wasn't exactly on the priority list of, let me say again, zombie mushroom fungus. There should be no reason this exists in the series. It doesn't mesh well with the story, it doesn't mesh with the tone, it doesn't even mesh with what you'd call the antagonist, if you can call a fungus that. The thing is, you can explain how something is happening without explaining why it's happening to retain that fear of the unknown. Mandela Chronicles? Satanic demons taking over the world or something. They have the power to hijack technology and make people scared innately. Gemini Home Entertainment? Things are compromised. Aliens are taking over media. Local 58? The fucking moon is killing people and hijacking our minds or something. I don't know. I haven't watched it in a long time. I should. It's good. Doesn't need to be made crystal clear as to why they're doing it in the way they're doing it, but simply how. Otherwise, all you get is this, which is just as meaty and as memorable as old Newground jump scare animations. Do you remember those? No. You don't. Good lord, I spent a page and a half on a five second clip. Moving on to wrap up this segment, we learned about two morticians who were infected with the fungus after being unfortunate enough to be in the room when it, so to speak, sprouts and are left in quarantine which is where this segment leaves off on something of a cliffhanger. Now, for the next part, you know what? All a bit. This is pretty good. It's dubbed footage of a Bill Clinton speech, which, which has properly timed lip flaps as he speaks, giving an address on the situation. Nothing really to critique here, it's honestly a really solid segment in a rather flawed series using a few easy but effective tricks to hide cuts or the parts where the words don't quite sync with the mouth. Frankly, good job here. If you can't deep fake something, just normally fake it. Man, I hope nothing happens to immediately take me out of the mood of such a genuinely good part.
Why are the mushrooms ghosts? Why are the mushrooms digital? Why are the mushrooms editors? Why are the mushrooms alternates? Why are the mushrooms demons? Why are the mushrooms? Why are the mushrooms? Why are the mushrooms? Why are the mushrooms? Why are the- So now we can learn that there's two different variations of the fungus. That it- and what it does to people. There's variant A, which is the most common variant, and the one we know of already. This is the one that tends to make people degrade into- well, let's be real what it turns people into. It's a zombie story. It breaks the person down, makes them commit acts of violence to spread the infection. And then you have variant B, which is more of an asymptomatic variant. While the carriers of this do carry the risk of transmitting the virus to others, they retain their faculties and physicality. This kind of infection can be somewhat considered safe, with Sarah Campbell being the first known case of this. And finally, we have variant C, which is spooky ghost edits, the research notes that are on tape for some reason, and also this is Mandela, and also mushrooms. Well, if you freeze frame this, the text below the face tells us that these ones have heightened senses, are more bloodthirsty, have inhuman strength and stamina, as well as a bulletproof exterior, because mushrooms make you bulletproof and jacked and a little bit sus. And uh, 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 oh, it's over. Oh, thank the Lord, it's over. Uh, so let's recap on what we've got so far. Taking a look at the series as a whole, so far we have half-baked science reports that don't make sense why they're on tape, a uh, police log that doesn't make sense as to why it's on tape, a small smidgen of story about a guy that attempted a mass homicide, and attempting to be spooky faces. I mean, sure, there's continuing themes, the mushrooms, the research reports, but it's just effectively world-building, and world-building doesn't make a good story. A backdrop helps, but there's nothing to be connected to here. Nobody to anchor ourselves to. Who's the one the audience is meant to relate or get invested in? Is it Sean? The guy that dies five minutes after you meet him? Is it Sarah? We just met her and she doesn't get much involvement with the story. Uh, what's the meat of the story? If it's not the characters, then what do you point at that gives it its purpose? What is the core identity of the Spile Tapes? Is it the mushrooms? Because zombie mushrooms aren't like new and the presentation doesn't make it exciting. Sure, there's something happening, but we're so disconnected from it that it doesn't have any real narrative weight. I don't want to dog on this too much. A actually, no, yes I do, because I keep hearing from people talking about how great this series is, and I'm just thinking, have standards dropped this much? I'm not going to insult the creator here, but I am going to insult their work. This is bad. This is not good at all. And fine. That'd be fine. Bad things are made all the time. And making bad things is usually what leads people to making good things. What gets me here is that I keep hearing people talk about how good or scary the series is, and it has no bite, has no edge, has no tension, has no story. This is repeated tropes you've seen in other series thrown together nonsensically until it's the horror equivalent of jingling keys in front of someone's face. The best way I could put this is, the smile tapes is the cave of shadows of analog horror. Padariku, my guy, you're never gonna watch this. But if you do, I sincerely hope this doesn't discourage you. I see bits of glimmer in this series. You've got a creative idea here, even if I'm sure this series can't be salvaged. And I've seen season 3, it does not get salvaged. I can see that you have some level of creativity to be making these. You're already a step above the majority of people, because even if you've gone and made something that's bad, you've gone and made something. That's more than many people can say. People that are too intellectually or creatively stagnant to come up with an original idea. People that are overflowing with ideas but are too scared of criticism to put them out there. You're above people like that. If you ever see this, no matter how much I'm shitting on your work here, just know that you're already a step above most others, and I'm positive that you can improve. And one day, I'm sure you can make something great. As for the people that I've been hearing calling the series so great and scary, I'm not going to lay into you. Because you're obviously children. And those of you that are not, and you genuinely think this is good, I'd recommend just watching something else. If your standards have fallen this low that you think this is amazing, you're going to be absolutely blown away when you find out there's things made with actual genuine skill and well-made stories. Go watch, like, Backroom's Exploration, 
Like, the the good one with the yellow rooms and the hazmat suits, not the video gamey Reddit whatever the other side of the back rooms is degraded into at this point. Or expand your horizons a bit. Find some media that challenges you. You can enjoy something that's amateur and cheesy. That's fine. There's always the idea that something is so bad it's good. But this ain't it, Chief. This is just bad. And people that tell you it's good are lying to you and lying to themselves. On that note, thanks for listening to Ramble for about the last 15 to 20 minutes. The next video is going to be less negative. I won't be covering part three of Smile Tapes. It does get a little better, but not enough for me to take note, and the flaws are just as prominent. And also, it ends on a massive anticlimax, uh, to the point of actual comedy. Uh, you could have me believe that this series was just gearing up to undercut itself for the sake of a joke. But I'm not going to sit here and be on a mushroom-infected horse. Uh, there's a point where it goes from just harsh criticism to outright bullying, and I'm teetering dangerously close to that ledge. If you somehow manage to sit through me insulting you with the paragraph before the last one and somehow still think, wow, this guy has some really good points, and I'm not insulted to enjoy this guy's content, then feel free to subscribe. There's also a link below to join my Discord. I hope that you have a good day, and I hope that one day you dare to try and create something. This has been The Voices in Your Headphones, and it's time for me to go quiet once more. <laughs>